Hello everyone, welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. So today I'm be covering a nice upgrade, especially for you guys that are a little bit newer in your tank and you guys are always wondering that question, how can I make my tank, my corals a lot happier, um, get them growing. And you know, there's quite a bit of variables in this, but the number one variable, the one that's gonna uh, be the most determining factor is gonna be stability. Um, obviously there is you guys that do do water changes but we got to also understand in between your two your water changes let's say you do them every two weeks every three weeks or a month uh, during that that time in the middle so if you're having your alkalinity and calcium uh, changing it's not going to be good news for your corals um, you know one week especially if you guys wondering how come some weeks my coral look good and the next week they don't it's really just because you're uh, having fluctuations well if, you, if you're not having that much growth again um, it has to do with fluctuations. And like I said, there's a few more variables, uh, lighting, major trace elements, minor trace. I mean, there's there's quite a bit of variables, but this by far is gonna be a great update or upgrade for your tank. It's gonna make it a lot more stable. Uh, thus, you're gonna have happier corals and you should get a little bit better growth, better coloration. Uh, should get you also started off, uh, off on the right foot when it comes to stability. So this whole setup here, you're gonna be able to set up a full dosing pump on your reef tank for under or around $80. And you guys heard right, around $80. Uh, there's a lot of dosing pumps out there, uh, some very expensive ones. Uh, this is probably the, the cheaper end um, of them all. And you're, you're gonna read some reviews, a lot of people talking about these J-Bow pumps that they're not very accurate, they're not very good. Guys, for you guys that have seen my tank, I've been running one for about a year and a half with no issues whatsoever. Um, a big upgrade you can do is adding a check valve. I'll have a video in the description if you guys haven't watched that video, but that's a way you can make not only that pump more accurate than one I use, you can also make this one or any other doser more accurate. But <clears throat> so you guys heard right, we're gonna get everything set up uh, for around 80 bucks. Now it's not gonna be a full detailed video because I've already done a detailed video on how to program this. Um, this is going to be kind of more uh, to guide you in the right direction so if you guys are considering doing a doser and you're like it's just too overwhelming i'm just i just don't know how to do it um, a lot of you guys saying okay well i know i need to get a doser but how do i know how much to be adding we're going to be covering that here in today's video so one of the first things you're obviously going to need is your doser this doser i got off amazon i want to say it's around 59 dollars um, everything I'm running down here are, are a lot of things I talk about. If you guys don't see them here, uh, you're going to see the links in the description. Uh, so yeah, you can get this doser on Amazon. Another thing you're going to want to figure out is a container. For you guys that don't want to go out and spend about 50, 60 bucks on the container on Amazon, it's the one I use and I love it. Uh, you can by all means do a, a vase water bottle. So this here, I've done the conversion uh, to accept RO line. If you guys want to check out how to do a conversion on your dose or how to make it accept RO lines, uh, check the uh, link in the description. I'm going to have a link to that video. Uh, and again, that video is also going to show you how to put a way, way, way better check valve um, in this, this doser here. So these Voss water bottles, sometimes you get them for free. I don't know if you drink Voss. Um, I've, you can order them online, Stater Brothers, sometimes Walmart will have them. Uh, but you're going to want to get this. I also have a video. Uh, showing you guys how to set these up, how to convert them. Now, for you guys that don't want to convert this whole setup to RO line and you want to use silicone line, you can purchase these little nipples that are going to be in the description. So pretty much you would just make a hole for this. Uh, you kind of want to make sure it fits tight. You're going to want to put the hole in um, and then you're going to want to use some coral glue to seal it up. And then that here on the opposite end, you'll be able to use uh, the silicone tubing. So there's going to be no uh, converting or nothing like that. So once you got that, you're also gonna need something to hold your lines. A coral Box, a Seaside Aquatics, there's a few companies that make them. I've used this one, I've used the uh, the Seaside or Bubble Magnus. I actually like the Bubble Magnus a little bit better than this guy. The only reason, my tank is an all-in-one. So whenever I shut off the return, the water line rises. And if it rises too high, I notice with this one, uh, the lines get submerged. So I didn't like that, so that's why I'm running the uh, the Seaside Aquatics, also known as the Bubble Magnus uh, holder. But again, this one will work great. And uh, one of the other things you are going to need that I don't have here, but I'm going to have in the description, is going to be some silicone or air tubing. You want to try your best to do silicone. You don't want to do any vinyl. Uh, just because silic the vinyl, I notice over time, will expand. 
thus letting in air on this doser or any doser for that matter. But at the end of the day, if you want to go the extra mile, do the RO conversion, which is going to be able to accept this. You just hook up the RO line and it makes it very, very simple uh, to create one of these. So I guess this is going to be the more anticipated part of this video for you guys wondering, so what elements do I need to be dosing? Well, when you're starting off, assuming you don't have tons of SPS coral, tons of high demand uh, corals in your tank, the main parameter you want to take care of is alkalinity. You are going to see this doser here is three channels. So in the future, you can do calcium, magnesium, um, or you know amino acids or no pox, anything of that sort, you can set these up. But for sure, you want to be taking care of alkalinity. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, alkalinity is consumed on a daily basis. So if your water changes are too far spread apart, you're going to see where that's going to become an issue and you're going to be stressing out your corals. So the way around that, so we don't stress out a coral, obviously one way is going to be manual dosing, but manual dosing is a whole other animal on its own. Again, if you don't do it every time, um, you're going to run into the same issue, having the fluctuation. So the best thing to do is have a computer, be automated, you know, if you're out on vacation or if you come home late or whatever the early that day from work whatever the case is if you're out with the family this is always taking care of it for you so for you guys wondering how do you figure out how much to dose and that's a great question in other words how much do I know or how do I know how much my tank is consuming as far as alkalinity we're only going to talk about alkalinity today but the same is going to apply for if you want to do calcium magnesium um, but the way I figured out to be easiest, assuming you have a HANA checker to check your alkalinity, I'm gonna recommend you guys get a HANA checker just cause it's very, very, very accurate. Anytime you are dosing any elements, you wanna be testing. You never wanna be dosing something in your system that you're not testing for. I mean, there's minor trace elements, you can kinda of get away with it, but alkalinity, calcium, you never wanna dose it without testing it. So one of the first things I'm gonna recommend for you guys is to get a HANA checker. So the way we, we would go about figuring out the consumption is going to say the example I'm going to lay out here for you guys is going to be started on Monday. Okay. So Monday, what we would do, we would get our HANA checker. We would measure our um, alkalinity. So based off that, assuming you're using the BRS um, alkalinity, the soda ash, which I'm also going to have in the description. The reason I use that, it's very affordable. You can go ahead and use Red Sea and the same would apply if you're using the Red Sea alkalinity. But what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna test your alkalinity on Monday. Let's say your, your alkalinity comes back at 7.0. Whether you're using Red Sea or BRS, if you're using BRS, it's gonna be a lot easier. You can use our online calculator. You put your water tank volume, you put your current alkalinity, followed by your desired alkalinity. So the desired is going to be wherever we want to maintain it. So let's say 8.5. So we test it at um, we test it at 7. We want to bring it up to 8.5. So we would dose whatever that calculator tells us. If you're using Red Sea, it's also going to tell you how much to dose based off your, um, your gallons of water in your tank. So we're going to dose it within, give it about 15, 20 minutes, then retest again. And you should be around that 8.5, 8.4 that you were trying to shoot for. So what you want to do, <clears throat> you want to write down that number and you want to let a total of four days pass. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Keep in mind, there was no testing, no dosing being done in the middle of this. And that first dose we did on Monday is going to be a manual dose. It's not going to be with the doser. So when you're done with your test on Friday, on the fourth day, you test your alkalinity. Once you get that reading, let's say it comes back at 7.5, for example. It comes back at 7.5. If you're using the BRS uh, alkalinity, you again, you put it into the calculator. And let's say, for instance, it tells you, let's say you put 7.5. And again, you, you put your desire to be 8.5. Let's say, for instance, it tells you um, to dose uh, four milliliters, right? It's an example. I know it's not going to be, depending on your water volume, it's going to be a lot more, a lot less, but let's say four. So <clears throat> what that is going to do, once you do the math, once you divide the four by the four days, it's going to equal one. 
So that one is gonna be your tank is consuming one DKH of alkalinity a day. So for you to keep up to your tank consumption, you're gonna to have to be dosing one milliliter a day so you don't have that loss. Obviously, if the days were to go on, you could see where uh, we would end up to essentially crashing your tank. So that's, I, I hope I didn't get you guys confused there. Um, if you're using the Red C one, again, you're gonna do the math. It's gonna tell you how much to dose. You divide that by the four days and that's gonna tell you how much, uh, how much your tank was consuming on a daily basis. So again, you're gonna go into the doser, you're gonna program it. Even if you're not using this doser, whatever dose you're using, you program whatever number you come up with um, into the doser to dose on a daily basis. Now for the first two weeks, guys, you're gonna wanna be testing every day to every other day. And the reason you wanna be doing this is because the tank, um, as you start dosing alkalinity, it's gonna, it's gonna kickstart it to start consuming a lot more alkalinity. Uh, last thing you want to do is kind of set this tank on cruise control and just set it and forget it. There will become a time where, where you are going to be able to test it a lot less, but at the very beginning, the first two weeks, you want to test every single day to every other day. After the second week, the second week to a month and a half, you can start dosing every, every third to fourth day. Then later we can spread it out to once a week, then twice a week. And if you're like me now with my tank, I, I probably test my alkalinity once every month and it's always at 8.5 so that's pretty much how you guys um, can set up your own doser at home I, I really hope i didn't lose you guys there on kind of how the math works but pretty much to sum it up uh, you test one day you dose whatever you want your desire to be you give it four days on the fourth day you again you test your alkalinity whatever supplement you're using um, you calculate the difference, see how much it's going to take to bring you back to the, your desired, which in my case was 8.5. If it's four milliliters, you divide four into the four days, which is one milliliter a day. Um, if it's 10, you divide it by four. If it's 20, you divide it by four. Whatever number it comes up with, you divide it by four. And then that's going to tell you how much your tank is consuming on a daily basis. So from that point forward, you can again, program into your doser. So we're going to wrap this video up here, guys. I really hope you guys got a lot of useful information out of this video. Now you guys can see how you can set your own doser up for under $80 as well as you can figure out the math, uh, which is typically, I that's always a feedback I get. That's always the hardest part is figuring out how much to dose. So really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. Guys, I'm gonna have links to everything down in the description. So if there's anything I missed, maybe I can clarify it there. And of course, if there's something you didn't understand, be sure to leave it down in the comment box below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.